Bukele, the president of El Salvador, recently adopted Bitcoin as legal tender, right? This is one of the most risky assets to be having as the, the currency for your country, uh, not to mention his country, the GDP, was actually funded by criminals and by crime generally, right? So he also got rid of all the criminals. So his economic issues right now, uh, that he can only really blame himself. He adopted the most risky currency as legal tender, okay? And then he got rid of the only real profit source for his country. And then he expects, uh, he expects the GDP to be supplemented by tourism, okay? This is just not going to happen. He needs to figure something out here. What are you doing, mate? Now, Bitcoin right now is on the downtrend. You can see here it does not look good at all. All right. It looks like it's literally poised to dump into the abyss. But what we can say here is there will be a few ways we can make money. But before we get into all of this stuff and all of the trades that I'm looking for, please, please, please like the video. And without further ado, let's jump in to the overall analysis of the markets. So if we're looking at the overall markets, we can see yesterday was a pretty bad day, a bit of a trap, right? We went up and then we got obliterated back down to where we started. Uh, nothing crazy crazy, okay? Uh, we haven't fallen off a cliff just yet, but uh, it's not looking good so far, okay? We can see that reflected across the board with all of these altcoins uh, and shit coins, right? If we are looking at fear and greed, we can see here currently at a 34, not too bad. This is actually more bullish than bearish generally, okay? Uh, if we do get a major dump here, this will obviously go down massively and that will indicate more that you should be buying, okay? When fear is low, all right, oh, sorry, when fear is high, then you should be buying, okay? When when uh, greed is high, then you should be selling, all right? So this, yeah, it is roughly a buy zone and we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, let's talk. Let's take a look at ETFs. We can see here that uh, if we are looking at the USD outflows and inflows here, we can see, yeah, we've had a few bad days in a row, but overall the ETFs are looking pretty good. I can't really hate on the ETFs. Uh, we are seeing the nice string of inflows is just recently the past few days and we have had some pretty big outflows across the board, but overall in terms of supply and demand, I would say uh, the ETF generally this year has been fantastic for Bitcoin. It is sucking up all that supply, which will lower liquidity and make volatility higher, but it will also poise Bitcoin for a massive aggressive bull run that if you are in on and if you are DCAing right now, you will make a lot of money. Okay, let's move on to the Bitcoin heater, right? Bitcoin heater right here, right now. This takes into account futures, options and open interest. Okay, and it gives us similar things to fear and greed, but probably a little bit more accurate, right? We can see here that it is actually near this green line right now. And that is usually a great buy time, right? A good buying signal here from this thing. And if we do just go back through the years here, we can see whenever we are below this line uh, for even an extended period of time here, guys, you can see that a massive uptrend follows, all right? A massive, massive bullish pump follows, right? So I don't think we're too far away from that just looking at this right now. So I would say this is typically quite bullish. Maybe we do get one more sweep towards the downside. But after that, I am expecting pretty much end of September, uh, October, November, that kind of area where we do begin that bullish uptrend where we do break all-time highs and where we do make copious amounts of cash, okay? That's the plan. If we're looking at annualized electricity consumption index here, we can see uh, this is just uh, the amount of money miners are spending on mining Bitcoin. And we can see that typically with this thing, this is correlated with the Bitcoin tops and Bitcoin bull runs, right? So when this does curl around towards the upside, then uh, it is a massively bullish sign as well. That also looks like it is trying to put in a low. It is curling over as you can see here. So uh, this is actually another bullish sign. We just need to wait for it to kind of start poising up again, right? When that does happen again, massively bullish, Bitcoin does bang it. And I'm not some moon boy here, okay? I make money from shorts. I make money from longs. I've been doing this for six, seven years in the crypto markets at least, right? So uh, yes, this is something that I find bullish. I've been here for multiple cycles and this happens every single time, okay? So uh, yeah, do not sleep on Bitcoin. It does look like we are gonna turn around soon. Uh, we'll just have to see if we do get that flush out from the stock markets, from this Japan situation and from uh, the election situation as well. But after that, I do think just based on supply and demand, based on the on-chain, it does look super bullish and this is a long 
long-term play, of course, but over the next year, I do think Bitcoin bangs it to 100, 200, maybe even 300K here. Okay, so if we are looking at the liquidation heat map, we can see here that we do have a more on the short term, right, guys? We can see that we do have, uh, yes, 124 million chilling down here, ready to be liquidated, but we have actually smashed through a lot of liquidations here. I think they've made roughly like a billion here in this in this downwards move. So uh, what we will say is, yeah, it does make sense that we do pump up here like we did yesterday. It does look like we are just accumulating, ranging for now. If we do get some bad news coming through in the political or financial markets, then we will be expecting Bitcoin to dump. OK, but uh, after that, again, we should be expecting a massive pump here. OK, so that's cool. If you do want to check out my Patreon, it's completely free. You just press follow. You sign them a Google. You just press follow and you get one free signal on Bitcoin for a trade every single weekday. OK, check that out right now. Let's jump in to the long term charts. Looking at the overall structure for Bitcoin right here, right now, we can see, yes, it is It is looking a lot more like we are seeing that uh, inverse parabolic curve, what we talked about in the last video, this kind of descending structure coming through here, where we are just making lower highs. We aren't hitting the trend lines that are formed here uh, for it to be resistance, and that does indicate that the sell pressure is a lot, uh, a lot harder and a lot higher than the buy pressure here, because we're not getting to those important resistance levels, okay? Uh, this high, for example here it's not really that I mean there is a horizontal here but it's not something that's super uh, super strong here right we've just not hit it okay without a trend line needing to be there we've just not got high enough here and the sellers have stepped in so uh, it's important to take that into account because when we are looking in a bull market or a bullish fashion we do exactly the same thing right so we can see a parabolic curve here okay when that parabolic curve breaks then we look for the downwards moves okay uh, and then if we we are in more of a bearish structure like so, we get what's called an inverse parabolic curve, which is this, right? When that parabolic or inverse parabolic curve does break, then we can expect that trend to end. And this is typically how you should trade crypto generally, or how you should trade most assets generally on the long term. So if we are looking at this, uh, yes, it does look like it is poised for that, um, that inverse parabolic curve to play out here. But as I said, right, as soon as we break over that parabolic line, okay, I would say probably uh, I mean, it depends how low we go, obviously, but when we do break over that structure, uh, then we can be expecting probably a little bit of sideways, and then we bang it from there, okay? So, yeah, just look out for that. As of right now, we're pretty inside that parabolic curve, or the inverse parabolic curve. So, uh, yeah, potentially we do come up tap 61k again. I do think that's fairly likely. Uh, and then from that point, we will see if we can get over that parabolic structure, right? If we can do that, then uh, it's time for the bulls to step in and that's when I'd be expecting to probably come back up to the high 60s again okay again if we do break over these levels at any time right of this parabolic structure or inverse parabolic cut structure then uh, yeah we should be expecting some bullish momentum to come through if not we should be expecting the bull run to continue from that point okay uh, but besides that what trades am I looking for I do just want to show you uh, this pattern here right so this pattern here we did talk about we said hey uh, if we can make a confirmed low in this area which we did not I will just spoil this here we just did not okay then this pattern would be valid if we did do that right but uh, yeah we did not so uh, this pattern isn't so valid technically you could say it's valid because of this wick here okay we have technically made a trend line here but uh, should we should we be expecting this measure move to play out I think the validity of this measure move just based on everything we just said right uh, is is not that good okay I think it's more likely we do just go sideways in this area again it is Friday all right so what we should be expecting is volatility and sideways price action over the weekend so I, I would probably just say my my prediction here unless we do massively dump tonight is a sideways weekend between I would just say 57.8 and 61.5 maybe 62 if we're lucky okay but overall yeah just expecting sideways here if we do want to continue this dump down then there is a trade I'll be looking for uh, it won't be I mean it's it's tough to, to kind of do it on this measure move, of course, but I think you could probably get one or two percent here down to these next levels here, right? These daily lows uh, if we do break this low here, okay? Because uh, we have tried to break it before, but we did not. It was, this was very much a trap, as we'll see in the short term in a minute. But uh, yes, I mean, if we can break this again, it's pretty much like, uh, yes, we should be going down to the next level, okay? So uh, yeah, looking for a one percent trade down there. We'll definitely ride the momentum. We'll definitely be cautious with that thing, okay? Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much the 
uh, the long term in a nutshell, okay? Besides that, obviously, we need to hold this big line that I've just ruined. There we go. <laughs> this big line here, uh, which is coming in around about 47k as of right now. If we were to dump down there today, it would be 47k. I do imagine we'd wick below there, but as long as we hold this line long term, then the bull run can continue. If it doesn't, then uh, yeah, we should be expecting a big sideways structure coming into early 2025, okay? Right, let's move on to the midterm. Don't you see that signing up with Prime XBT gives you $100 for free? Just click the link key. Midterm, let's take a look at all the structure here to begin with, and then we'll bring up some indicators that will really indicate what, what's happening here, right? So if we are looking generally at the structures and the measure moves, we can see, yes, we did break this trend line. We had the spillover, and then it just free fell from there, okay? Uh, now, we do have this pattern here, which is technically valid, okay? You can even say it's valid uh, from this small high here on the way down. And uh, yeah, that, that did have a measure move towards the downside. That measure move is, is pretty much played out, right? We can see that here. Uh, so this upwards trend we did talk about yesterday coming up to uh, potentially the mid 61s. We didn't actually get there on this exchange. It was uh, 61.2 roughly around that area. So technically you could be expecting us to come up here and test this trend line a little bit more. But uh, overall, yes, we've completed this pattern now. We've completed the measure move. So it's not even valid anymore. Get rid of it, all right? What we can say is uh, yes, uh, we do have a new pattern here on the four hour at least, uh, which could uh, indicate a measure move down. This is basically what we were talking about on the daily, okay, so over here which is sim a similar pattern, okay? But on the four hour, obviously it's gonna be less valid on this time frame. But if we did wanna break this low, uh, I mean, just general traditional TA says we do take a trade here. And this is really what I'm looking for for that 1% trade, okay? So if we can do that, fantastic stuff. If not, absolutely fine, we will chill. But uh, yeah, traditional TA does say that we do have a measure move down here. I'm not going for the whole thing here. I'm not going for 53K, of course, but I will be going down for this next level. This does make sense to me. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. But again, if this is a weekend when this happens, I'm not gonna do it, all right? It's, it's gonna be too trappy, too risky. We will just wait this one out, all right? Uh, on the other hand, on the flip side, if we do want to head up here, uh, if we wanna break 65.8, I know it seems pretty far away, but if we do wanna break that, then yes, I will be expecting a massive uh, parabolic pump towards the upside uh, that is just super aggressive, and we just tap 70K from there. That's really what I'm going for, uh, for the midterm anyway, okay? Besides that, yeah, if we are just looking at general structure, again, it does look pretty bad. Um, just typically you would be expecting to come down to the low 40s, but uh, yeah, there's there's definitely a route there where we can make money towards the up and the downside. Okay, let's move on. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Uh, we're we're gonna look at some of these other things as well. Uh, yes, we've got the uh, volume weighted ATR bands right here right now. So these are currently around uh, the fifth. We got the 15 minute here uh, around 58.2, and then we've got the 60 minute around 58.5. Uh, what we're doing to aim for this trade is getting below those and getting below this low here. So uh, ideally, we want something like this okay and then we get in that trade uh, and then yeah maybe we ride it down a bit lower if it is a crashing scenario but overall majority of the take profit on this one percent trade okay uh, besides that i do just want to bring your attention to liquidation levels all right so liquidation levels on the four hour we can see uh, yes it does these blue lines are really what you want to be looking for okay so when we do get big uh, influxes on the open interest. So that's this thing here. Okay, so the, the amount of contracts open essentially, right? Um, we can see that this indicator actually plots in a line when that happens, okay? So when we get a big move like so, like here, right? Uh, you can see, then we start this line here. What this line is, this is a 10X liquidation level, okay? So if you were to take a trade here, okay, when that volume and, uh, and everything is increasing, we're in a pretty aggressive move. You were to take a trade here, your liquidation level would be here, okay, if you would take short, right? So uh, what we will say is just generally in terms of correlation, in terms of uh, this as a strategy and back testing, Bitcoin loves to go and violate these levels after they've been made, all right? Because market makers love to liquidate the 10X guys, right? So uh, what we will say with this is, yes, you can see every single time, right? These are plotted from the past moves, but Bitcoin just always smashes into them. So with that logic in place, what we can say here is uh, there are massive liquidation levels to both sides. This can go either way, but if we do go either way, uh, we could be targeting those levels for trades anyway, right? Or uh, once all of those levels are filled, we wait for some more blue lines to come up and we just take a trade towards those lines. And um, just based on my experience, guys, I have seen that this works very, very well, uh, even on the high time frame. So if we go to the daily here, we can see 
see that uh, yes, we had uh, we had this pump up. Okay, we hit those levels. Okay, uh, and this is like from where this line was put in. Let me just show you. Obviously, it's 10x, so 13% towards the downside. If you would take a short just here, blind. Okay, uh, obviously not on a high leverage, but blind. Then uh, you would have made 13% there. Okay, uh, same thing with this one. Okay. And you can just see here throughout, all these blue lines do get hit. So all of these 10x liquidation levels do get hit. And that is something that should not be ignored at this point because the data is just so conclusive at this point that uh, I'm thinking about just setting up a separate strategy on a separate account that just targets these because it's it's so profitable. Okay, we can see it here. All right, uh, we've got a level up here at 65.9. Okay, we've got levels all the way up there as well. Okay, 70K, uh, 74, 77. All right, and these are the targets. These do align with targets that, uh, that align with our TA as well. So yeah, I mean, all I'm saying is don't fade these lines because, uh, yeah, this is a free indicator and you can find this on TradingView. Just go into indicators, search it, and you'll find it, okay? But, uh, yes, uh, this is something you should not ignore. This is something you should definitely have on your charts. And uh, what we will say is, yeah, that level is 54 or 53.8, 53.9 for that next liquidation level if we do go down. If we do go up here, the liquidation level is 65.9. So if you were to just open a trade here to both directions, okay, it's quite likely eventually we do hit both of these levels particularly in this sideways market that we're in, all right? Uh, and even if we did hit this level, we would still be below pretty conclusive trend lines, right? So uh, yeah, I mean, there's money to be made here for sure. But that's all I wanted to say on the, on the midterm. Let's jump down to the absolute degenerate zone uh, that you all know and love. Degen zone is looking disgusting disgusting right now. What we will say is uh, there are trades, but I would just be very careful with them. Okay, we had this trade that we plotted in the other day that did come into fruition. Beautiful stuff. Okay, but the market is super trappy right now. Uh, when you're looking at this, when you look at, look at this, just look at this right now. It's disgusting. Okay, you don't want that. You don't want that. Uh, and what we will say is, um, yeah, when the market is behaving like this, you should not be trading the short term. But if you are going to say, Hamilton, just give us a trade. I want to gamble. Just want to play this roulette wheel. I want 100x. Bang it in. Okay, uh, this is your own choice. I'm not liable. Good luck. Okay, you're probably going to lose. But <laughs> if we do break this low, uh, again, uh, you could be banging in trades down to each of these levels. And this is actually what I'm looking for on the midterm as well. So it's not it's not too bad. But uh, again, super risky time in the market. But yeah, there is this trade here. It's 2%. We've, we've highlighted this on every time frame so it's not a problem but towards the upside that's where the real degens uh, come in right uh, and the upside trade is weird okay the upside trade is weird there might be a one percent trade here if we do break over this level okay 60,200 if it is strong if there's volume if it's good okay then there might be a trade towards the upside uh, and uh, also we we also smashed through here on the hourly without testing these moving averages so uh, typically what you'd expect here is that being a trap and us grinding back through uh, and trying to test these higher levels again Again. So uh, yeah, not too bad here on that. But again, very risky trapping market right now. Just be very careful out there. Okay. All right. So that is going to be it from me. Have a fantastic day. Be sure to like the video. It does help me out a lot. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know if you're making money out here. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. I do have a channel update. Okay. I do have a channel update. Okay. We are going to be uploading a lot less frequently now. Okay. The signals will still be coming through every day on the Patreon. Don't worry. Okay. So small little videos for you. That's going to be cool. Uh, but on YouTube, I am just a bit sick of it. All right. Uh, and the reason for this is isn't you guys, it's nothing like that, but I have been doing this for like three or four years now on the channel, uh, and uh, th the truth of it is, I've looked at the analytics, I'm an analyst, right, uh, and what happens is, these these scammer bots, they come in the comments, they, they, they put their comments in, they get the other bots to comment on that comment, uh, and they all watch minimal watch time, so the algo just doesn't pick up the videos, right, it's unfortunate, but it does happen, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling that I need, I need to have a different strategy here because this is this one isn't working okay i am still going to be here for you guys that have joined the channel and have joined the patreon have have been part of this community for a long time but uh, what i am going to say here is sign up for prime xbt and no, i'm just kidding i'm just kidding uh, what we will say here is um yeah we are going to be uploading less frequently but uh, i am going to be doing a different type of content strategy which will be a little bit around trading but um yeah i'm, I'm just feeling like uh, i want to i want to try something a little bit more mainstream uh, in the trading 
kind of space, right? So we'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll see how that develops. But uh, yeah, I'm just feeling a bit more adventurous now. So let's just let's just figure that out and see what happens, right? So there will still be uploads to this channel, but they'll be slightly less frequent and more like when we get a big move or uh, when I think there's a big move coming or when there's big news, right? Uh, that's really uh, these updates. But yeah, maybe maybe these updates are too frequent now anyway. Uh, so let me know what you think of that in the comments if you did watch this far. But those of you that are the loyal ones, I do respect you. And uh, thank you very, very much for being part of this journey so far. We will be still uploading, as I said. But uh, yeah, it will be slightly less frequently. Like three, three uploads a week, maybe two uploads a week. Uh, and then short form content as well. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's going to be it from me. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Long term charts. Long-term charts. Long-term charts.